Hi, I'm Olivia Franklin, and today I will be talking about Willis Newton. Leave it to a Texan to pull off the largest train robbery in history. They also knocked off five other trains and an astonishing 80 banks. Even though they broke the law, they did it without violence and very little fanfare. The Newton gang was one of the most successful train and bank robbers in the history of the United States. They were in Texas for most of the 1920s and have robbed over 80 banks and six trains, making millions of dollars. The leader of the Newton gang was Willis Newton. He was born on January 19, 1889, to a dirt poor family of cotton farmers near the Uvalde, Texas. Willis and his 10 siblings had a hard childhood of mind-numbing labor on the family farm. Tired of being bored and poor, Willis had his first brush with a life of crime at the young age of 20. He claimed that he was convicted for a crime he didn't commit, but his brother Wiley, or Doc, Newton did. Doc, the oldest Newton boy, stole loose cotton from the loading dock of one processing gin and tried to sell it at another. When the police could not find Doc, the authorities arrested Willis and charged him instead. In 1909, a local jury convicted Willis on flimsy evidence and sentenced him to a year of hard labor in prison. His thieving brother, Doc, was thrown in the same prison a few months later. Somehow, Willis and Doc slipped away from the prison, but were recaptured with five years tacked on to their sentence. After his tough childhood and being thrown in prison, Willis believed he had been wronged and decided that he would get back at the authorities by becoming the criminal people made him out to be. In 1914, Willis and his friend robbed their first train and stole $4,700, which is the modern equivalent to more than $100,000. Now, with, this, with a taste for loot, by about 1920, Willis and these outlaws had stolen near, nearly $400,000 worth of bonds and cash. He then came back to Texas. In 1921, Willis formed his own gang by recruiting his brothers Jeff and Doc to his outlaw lifestyle. They also brought in an explosive expert named Brent Glasscock. Then the real stealing began. From November 1921 to the end of 1922, the Newton gang robbed banks all over Texas and even in Colorado, Indiana, Missouri, and Canada. They never killed anyone in the process. Some witnesses even said that the gang was polite to the bank tellers they were robbing. Patrons and bank employees often described the Newton gang as going out of their way to make sure everyone was comfortable. Even so, the gang often caused thousands of dollars in damages to a single bank, not including the cash stolen. The key to their bloodless crime spree was that most of their robberies were committed at night. Using explosives, they mostly broke in and blew open the safes. They were long gone before the authorities ever arrived. Through bribing a corrupt insurance official at the Texas Association of Bankers, Willis obtained a list of banks that still possessed older models of safes that were vulnerable to their brand of attack. Before entering the bank, Willis usually would climb up the phone towers and cut the lines. Then they would go into the banks and pour nitroglycerin into cracks in the safe doors before setting off the explosives with dynamite. Then they loaded up into their favorite getaway car, a Studebaker, while locals tried to phone for the police but couldn't. In other robberies, the patrons and bank employees often described them as being extremely polite going out of their way to make sure everyone was comfortable. The gang sometimes caused thousands of dollars in damages to a single bank, not including the cash stolen. They were bold bandits. In Hondo, Texas, the gang reportedly robbed two banks in the same night after finding the first vault door open. Occasionally, their plans might change and the crew planned daytime robberies, like on March 9, 1922 in New Braunfels, Texas. A simple bank holdup. On July 24, 1923, the Newton gang was in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, robbing pedestrian bank messengers. Then they hit the Toronto Currency Clearinghouse later in that morning. 
This time, things went poorly. A fight ensued. When the bank messengers refused to surrender their bags, and gunfire was exchanged eventually. And Willis wounded two messengers during the shootout. Two scores brought in about 84,000 Canadian dollars, but they had drawn blood. Even so, they made out with about $200,000 from just a year of robberies, or about $3 million today. Willis invested a large amount of his money into oil wells, hoping to make it big during the boom times for the industry and buy his way out of a life of crime. Doc and Jess, though, enjoyed the good life, visiting the Kentucky Derby and enjoying the nightlife in several big cities. Willis persuaded Joe to invest with him in various oil wells, but all of them failed to produce. Born into poverty, the brothers did not save much. Besides, where would they put their money? In a bank? In the 1920s, interstate crime was difficult to police. Anonymous, wide-ranging, and fast-moving, the Newton gang received very little attention from law enforcement, despite the large number of robberies they had committed. However, that would soon change. The gang's biggest and last score unfolded on June 12, 1924, in Illinois. Teaming up with a bunch of Chicago criminals, the Texans and their accomplices robbed a train of $3 million dollars worth about $45 million today, making it the largest train robbery in history. They drew blood again this time. During the robbery, Doc Newton was accidentally shot by another gang member. Police were able to track the whereabouts of the wounded Newton. Police soon caught up with them, ending their five-year reign. One by one, each of the four brothers were caught by the police. Each served time in prison, but received relatively light sentences due to no one being injured. No one except Doc, that is. They also returned a majority of the money they had stolen from the big train heist, but some remained missing. Jess Newton had buried $100,000, the equivalent of $1.5 million today, northwest of San Antonio, on his way to Mexico, but was drunk at the time he buried it. To this day, the stash has not been found. A little time in prison ended the Newton gang. Jess and Joe, lacking criminal records, received the lightest, the lightest sentences. These two brothers returned to Uvalde, Texas, where they led respectable lives for the most part. Willis and Doc spent many years in prison. After his release, Willis returned to Tulsa, where he ran a series of gas stations and nightclubs and maintained criminal connections while keeping himself out of trouble. He rarely spoke about these years in much detail, but he was clearly involved in local nightclub wars and episodes of nightclub arson reported at the same time period. Willis was a victim of an assassination attempt at one point, being shot through his bathroom window, but he did survive. In 1934, both Willis and Joe were sentenced to nearly 10 years in Oklahoma framed for a bank robbery they did not commit. They served at least seven years each. Joe returned to Uvalde, having already renounced his life of crime. Willis returned to Tulsa and the nightclub life, but in the early 1950s also moved back to Uvalde, where he managed to stay out of prison and the limelight. Amazingly, 77-year-old Doc Newton was again arrested for bank robbery in 1968 in Rowena, Texas. Authorities dropped the charges due to his advanced age and the fact that he had gotten beaten up during the arrest. Jess Newton died on March 4, 1960, having lived out the remainder of his life as a cowboy in Uvalde. A veteran of World War I, he died in a VA hospital. He never was able to remember where the buried money was, but often complained about the country being taken off the gold standard, since he apparently lost a great deal of money when his stolen bonds were left unredeemed. Doc never fully recovered from his beating in Rowena, but lived until 1974, dying at the age of 83. Willis lived to age 90, a familiar figure and notable figure around Uvalde. He died of old age on August 22, 1979. The youngest Newton brother, Joe, died at age 88 on February 3, 1989.
but only after being interviewed on a late-night television talk show about his youth as a bank and train robber. In 1998, Matthew McConaughey starred in a movie, The Newton Boys, that tells an embellished and at times humorous version of their exploits. Willis, Doc, Joe, and Jess were products of their own time and circumstances, Born poor, they tried to cut corners to live the fancy life of the 1920s they saw going on around them, and to get back at a system they thought was working against them. It worked for a while, but in the end, crime didn't pay. Yet the nearly bloodless bandits from Texas are remembered as being some of the most successful and polite desperados in history. Mm -hmm.